So today we're looking at some ESP8266 stuff and I've got three different development boards here. Uh, there's the ESP-12 uh, on all of them and uh, they're all so, sort of slightly different configurations. Uh, these two have got RGB LEDs in an SMD format. This one's got just a sort of normal one with legs on. Um, and these two, well actually only one, two sorry, these two have LDRs on them too and this one doesn't seem to. Um, this one is called the ESP202, upside down, 202, uh, and it's a nice little board. It's a new one that I picked up. I'll put a link in the description. I can only find somewhere on Amazon that, where they're really kind of expensive, but I'll put a link all the same, but you can find them on eBay or AliExpress. But what I wanted to do today is talk about using them as access points to set configurations or just to get data. Now it's become incredibly easy these days to do that. I used to uh, do this on the ESP01. Um, if you remember, I did a vi video a long time ago doing this and um, things have developed since then. I was using AT commands to communicate back then using uh, an UNO or an AT Mega 328. But now you can actually use it in the Arduino IDE. Things are so much easier and people have created libraries to do that. Now, before I knew that there was a library that existed to do what I'm about to show you, I tried to write my own. Now, I wanted to have a, uh, my ESP8266 connect to any network. I'm just gonna plug this into a little power bank. Connect to uh, any network and well, any network that didn't require sign in via a portal like a, a web page or something. And so what I did was I hooked up this uh, ESP with some code that created an access point first, asked for some credentials, and then would let you um, store those credentials in here to connect to a network. So if I go to 192.168.4.1, I get a web page. And this web page, first off, it scanned the Wi-Fi networks, the available ones. And you can see there's a couple here. Um, they'll be my neighbors. Uh, and we can add in a username and password. So it can be anything I like. And then I can just submit that and it tells me what it's received. So it's re connect to this one using that username and that password. Now I haven't implemented the section where it uh, goes off and connects. And the reason for that is because I found a much better way of doing it. So if we just get rid of this witty board here and we bring in this one. Now, um, this one is far superior in almost every way. Just gonna go and get a cable for this one. Okay, I've got a cable. And I say this one's far superior in every way uh, because it's not my code. Uh, someone else has written it. Now, um, for this one, we need to uh, connect up a pin to another pin, and I'll explain why in a second. This one's using a library by Sapau, Sapu? Uh, it's TZAPU, and uh, the library is called Wi-Fi Manager. You can find it in the Arduino IDE under, li under Library Manager and install it from there. This is using the um, on-demand configuration portal. Now this one requires you to have one pin specified as a switch. So I've got pin 12 specified and fortuitously on this board, it uh, is hooked up to the RGB LED. So that will light red when, um, when I plug this in. And that says that the board isn't gonna be acting as an access point. It will still show up on your Wi-Fi scan, but it won't be acting as an access point. So if I plug that in, we've got our red LED showing there. And if I go to Wi-Fi on the phone, you'll see it will pop up as um, a an available Wi-Fi network called Cool Wi-Fi Manager. Let's just move over this side so it's not quite so uh, blown out by the lights in here. Now, when I take this out and put it into ground, it's going to start it up as an access point. And when I connect to that Wi-Fi, it does something very cool. It says Wi-Fi sign in required. This has its own DNS server uh, built into the code so that it means it's telling my phone I need to sign in. And it does it in a really cool way. So this is the 
setup area. So we can configure the Wi-Fi without a scan or configure it with a scan. We can look at the info on here. So this is our chip ID, flash ID, all this kind of stuff. Um, and we can reset the chip if we want to. Um, we can go to configure Wi-Fi. And this is gonna do a scan of the available networks. It gives me the network strength and then I can use the SSID and password. It is brilliant. Uh, the code is really, really simple. Just look at this. So we've got the library included at the top here as well as the ESP8266 stuff. And if I come down a bit, you'll see that it says about the pin. I selected pin 12 on the ESP01. It says that you can use two pins. And as I go down a bit further, you'll see the Here's the uh, conditional statement to say whether it's going to launch the config manager. Uh, and then a bit further down, it just says where you can add your code. It's perfectly simple. So I really love this little library. I think it's going to be brilliant for my internet button that I'm going to create and for loads and loads of projects in the future that I want to take out of the house or, or out and around where they're going to be in multiple locations. So it's absolutely perfect. The other thing I wanted to show you is I've been working on the AP stuff was uh, this little board here. So if I just disconnect from that one, network now. Oh, let's, let's uh, just forget the network, there we go. Um, this board is just a little ESP8266 board, but it comes with uh, a battery pack. It actually came with this three cell one, but I'm using rechargeable batteries and um, they can get down to 1.2 volts, giving you 3.6, but it goes through a regulator, so uh, four batteries is preferable, in my opinion. So I switched it out for that. So we're gonna turn this one on. This one uses um, the AP mode, and that's, again, kind of simple code. Here's a quick little snapshot of that code. Uh, it's, it's relatively simple. It's just based on one of the examples that you can find in the ESP8266 library. So you'll see that it's popped up there as light level ESP. Now I can just connect to that. It doesn't require a password. It, uh, it has a blank password in the code. And if I um, change this web address to 192.168.4.1, we can see it says you're connected to the network. And I've put a little bit of code in uh, to my web page to make it automatically refresh so that it's uh, looking at this light level here. So if I just cover that up, you'll see that the number changes. It's only refreshing every two seconds, so it's not super fast. We could change that so it refreshes a lot faster if we wanted to. Um, but I've been planning to use that for a little robot and I'll, I'll have the refresh time way down or I'll uh, have buttons that just uh, do sort of Ajax push stuff, I'm not sure. Uh, but I just wanted to share some of the stuff I've been doing. Uh, I will eventually be doing some stuff with that button and I'm probably gonna use one of these boards, these ESP-02 to program an ESP-01. Uh, so the little one that's gonna go in there. So I'm really excited about this. I uh, just thought I'd let you know about the library. It will be in the description below. If I can find some links to these products online, I will, but I've had these for a long time, so I'm not sure it'll be the exact same ones. I'm sure that one's on Amazon somewhere. This will definitely be on Amazon, so I'll send you a link to that. And the witty board I think I've covered before, so I'll put a link to the other video that uh, deals with that. Anyway, I just wanted to share that very quickly. The, the Wi-Fi manager is immensely good. I can't believe how easy it is to do that. So, uh, all right, I'll speak to you later.